What is up, everybody? So good to see you today. Is it's a Thursday, I believe. And you know what? It's been a little while since I've been on live stream, so we're a little rusty. I'm gonna have to shake out the rust here. But we have a jam-packed episode with our kind of most two prolific logo therapists on the show today. Of course, we're talking about Mart and Everton. And we're doing a thing again called Logo Therapy, where we take two designers who take two logos and we're gonna talk about them today. Hey. So it's two by two. Mark, did you just yawn? I said today. Today. <laughs> today. <laughs> okay, you guys know him and love him. First up is Mark Beeman, and he has a company called Studio Opmars, and he's based out of the Netherlands, okay? And this is some of his wonderful work. We we're just talking about earlier today. They're on the show, sharing their knowledge, doing this work for free. But that doesn't mean that they'd do they they do real work for free so if you guys like the work i would highly encourage you to look them up and give them a shout to see if they can help you out with your branding and identity needs and next up is everton and he's based out of brazil brazil and he does some really beautiful identity design work check that out again these two guys are looking for work so if you have something and you have some money to spend give them a look check them out and I just want to mention at the top of the show, there's a couple things I want to do because people still don't know this about us. The way we're able to sustain what it is that we do is through you guys purchasing our courses or our kits or just dropping a little money here and there. That's how we do. And enough with the commercial. We're going to jump right in. First up is Olis Kozak. I don't know how to say that. And he's from the Ukraine, I believe. And this is his original mark here. I think it's the letters S-O-W-A, and I don't know much else about this, Mark, so I'm going to turn this over to Everton. Everton, what are you going to do? Oh, oh you have to turn on your mic, Everton. All right. There all right, we all go. Right. All right. <laughs> all right. Good to see you, man. Yeah, you too. Uh, I'm just trying to connect my mic. It's... it's Every, every, everyone is listening? We are with you. We can hear you loud and clear. All right. So can I do it? You can do it. It's all you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. So all is, um, he's Ukrainian and he sent, he submitted, um, his logo. Mm -hmm. Sowa, Sowa, I guess is a digital agency. And he had this idea to combine uh, this frequently used programming, these braces. Uh, thank you, Jonah. <laughs> I learned this word from him five seconds ago. So uh, he, he wants to combine these braces uh, with a beak of an owl because sowa means owl in Ukrainian. Mm. So uh, this is the logo he submitted. And I first, my, my first thoughts was uh, this is, uh, having some problems reading, right? It's difficult to, to read. Um, I don't know if it looks like a, a now for sure. You know, it could be like a bull or a buffalo from whatever particular reason. So uh, I try to, to, to change that. And for me, one thing that I really like about logos uh, is one thing that it, it's called attractiveness, you know? So when I look at a logo, uh, I imagine if everyone would be wearing it like proud, you know, showing for people um, from stickers or whatever. Uh, and this, I want to to uh, to change that on on the, his logo. So it kind of goes different ways, you know. I don't know if it's a symbol, if it uses only with the type or mm -hmm. whatever. So this time I approach differently. Uh, I went straight from my sketchbook and I tried to um, do some stuff that I, I really don't do, um, basically. So I tried to get lose myself a little bit from grids and that stuff. So I went to sketchbook and just trying to, to draw something that really caught my attention. Mm -hmm. And I went over the internet um, searching for different variations of owls and I found infinite... Um, <laughs> things right yeah uh, there's a lot of owls uh, that I have done before but I try to kind of incorporate that the feeling of uh, when I design for a company I, I just want them to the people to feel the logo that it's global right not only local but 
get that feeling that, wow, this is a brand, this is a logo really nice. And if they compare, if, if people compare it to, uh, I don't know, Apple, Nike, the, the big ones, that, sh that, that for me is just the biggest, uh, the biggest goal. So I went from this first option here, the A, uh, I think that has presence uh, and for me have that attractiveness, you know, that I, I've talked about. And also not intentionally, but we do have this greater than and less than kind of thing that it might be something that we can use later for our brand identity. Oh, I see. So, yeah, so I just went to Illustrator and started to work on, on, on the vector. And, and again, for me, I tried to, to let go for a second uh, about greed and stuff. And it, it was really challenging for me because I never do that. But at the same time, when you have the, the, the paper and the, on, on the background, the draw, uh, it's it more, you can mess around with more easily. So I went to the vectorizing process. Um, I was having difficult to find the right angle of the bars, you know, uh, there's a couple of tricks there that is, uh, you have to, to be aware, like the angled bars, um, are usually thinner than the, the, the vertical ones. Right. So yeah, I was trying to pay attention of that. And it, for me, it was really challenging. Really. I, I do not set this like a grid or use a lot of maths. I just went along. So hopefully that the result will, will be pleasing. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the same process, right? Mm -hmm. Bars, grids, um, cropping lines and all of that. So when you're saying you're doing things a little bit more optically to, so they're more balanced versus mathematically, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, for, for example, um, the, the white space of the, the eye, it, it didn't match at the same bars on, on, on the, the angled bars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's optically because when you reduce and we, we will talk about <laughs> this in a second, uh, we, we lost a lot of information that in small sizes. So for example, if I was doing like some work for a big studio, like let's say blind or the future. Right. Like a really big studio, <laughs> a big successful studio, like yeah, blind yeah, or the yeah. future. Right. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I would probably have to revise the logo and try to, I don't know, maybe do some smaller versions. Um, like if it has below 56, uh, 56 pixel would be a different arrangement. So we have to pay attention on that. So I just went, and move things around, trying to find that balance um, optically, but not totally. Mm -hmm. But I reached a result that, that I was satisfied. So I move along. Let me, it's two minutes less. It's very quickly. He looks so angry with those eyebrows. <laughs> Some people are like, it's a samurai. Mm. <laughs> You know what's really cool about the way you're drawing his eyebrow, which is it doubles as his eyebrow and the beak. Yeah, and totally. A very simple gesture. Yeah. Yeah. As so now, mm -hmm. yes. So now I try to refine as much as I can there. I, I don't. I didn't did. Um, I didn't do too much of of details after that. You know, this is the final version of the of the logo. Mm -hmm. The owl. Uh, I try to really create a symbol instead of doing the the, the braces with two two dots um, below it. So I try to really try to combine a now with the the programming stuff. So, but I change it to greater and less. Is, is that all right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Greater yeah, than so, and less than. Yep. Yeah. So and then I went to f match with some types that I, I will have that lockup uh, pretty uh, solid. I want to be as much as cohesive uh, from, from bars, uh, from type and symbol. Um, and again, I just did it. Um, I divided the symbol in six equally parts, but I didn't 
uh, I, I didn't stop a lot of time trying to measure all things. You know, I just went aligning things and finding that perfect balance that, in my opinion, uh, was good to go. So, and then I tried to put it into a little of context uh, just so we can uh, have a more clear idea about how can we go from it, you know, uh, different than uh, just the black and, and white. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to do this and use on the, the, the title that graded in and, and less, less than uh, to get this kind of mood. So, and again, um, just to set here a little, a little context, uh, digital, so vibrant colors, gradients maybe, um, illustration goes along with type, goes along with the symbol, you know, have this, this balance here. And then... Um, hey, can I ask you a quick question? What typeface yeah. are you using? What's the word mark? Uh, what typeface uh, is that? So it's Acrobat. A what? Acrobat. Acrobat? Acrobat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, people always want to know Acrobat. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. And I, I'm just trying to... I always try to uh, make that the brand identities that I do, it can go uh, really popular in a, in a way, you know, like just without luxury, without nothing. But if you just uh, pay attention to the print materials, uh, bevel, emboss, that kind of a thing, you just elevates the brand a little further. So for me, it's just have to work both ways. Uh, and I try to do, again, the, the symbol, trying to, to give that context of programming, coding, and all that kind of stuff, but maintaining like this fresh and clean image of uh, attractiveness, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I got it, but here's the, the... The before and after? Yeah, before and after. Yeah. Okay, before let's take a look at this. I think when I originally looked at the original mark, I wasn't even sure what the letters were because of the very tight tracking that was getting involved there. Sometimes I looked at it as so Sowa and Sona. I wasn't quite yeah. sure. And then uh, the question was probed to our audience. Did you guys see the owl? And some people saw it. I saw it, but a lot of people don't see it. And it's pretty subtle. So you went in and you did this overhaul. You drew a very geometric, simplified, and abstracted version of an owl. I really like what you're drawing here because with basically just rectangles and circles you've constructed an owl somebody had asked this question about golden ratio golden ratio no, no. <laughs> yeah no uh, I'm, I'm a great freak a little bit i yeah. confess but no, I'm not on just, this one like, no yeah no, no cool i like it i like it a lot so everybody let us know in the comments below let us know do you prefer the original Sowa logo or the revised one from emerton let us know which one you like a or B, old or new? Okay. Yeah, ag aggressive one, they, they are saying. Yeah. Angry one. <laughs> angry one. No, the angry one. The other one's much more friendly. He needs a little eyebrow trimming, a little. Yeah, yeah. Some curves. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I tried to smooth that with the gradient, the colors, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts or questions? Well, hearing none. Let's switch it over to Mart. Okay, so let's take a look at my deck. So next up is a logo that was submitted by, I, I'm gonna butcher this, Bar Barath, Bar Barath, and the logo is Desert Surf. I like this concept, I mean, as an idea, because you have the waves and you have the desert and the sand dunes in the back with the sun. Pretty nice, very simple apparel and accessories. Okay, so this is probably some kind of active wear line so let's get into it. Mark, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, I'm ready for you being ready. So let's do this. Nice, man. Let's get it going. <laughs> All right, so I'm just first, I'm going to sh share the process of my sketching. Uh, okay. the video created. Yes. It's uh, 10 minutes, so I'll just quickly go through it and then okay. we can I show you the rest. Yeah, perfect. So I had with this at the bar very high last time, so I'm just trying to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love so, that somebody's going to step up. I love it. First of all, the name, I wasn't really sure about the name. Yeah. So I'm actually, I've decided to go like the whole rebranding route this time. Uh -oh. Because it serves a bit, um, how do you say it? It's a bit common, you know, it's something that you could easily not 
if it would be hard to trademark, for example, because it's very common words. So I, in the end, decided to change the, the name of the company to something different. Okay. But I kept the design of the logo somewhat similar. So here I'm just sketching using the uh, same simple shapes of the original logo, but in a, in a more simple and clean way. So I'm basically using the dunes of the desert and the waves of the sea. Mm -hmm. Trying to create like a really simple, clean symbol because it's it's a company that focuses on um, on sports clothing and uh, out, outdoors apparel. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to have something that's very clean that you can use on like really big sizes, also on really small sizes. For example, if you have, if you have like a jacket, then you want it to be able to be printed on the chest in really small sizes. Right. I want to jump that's in here. <laughs> He's using Photoshop again. So yeah. Usman is saying, "Here comes the Photoshop brush gun." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay, very cool. So yeah, I'm just thinking about maybe a new name. So I thought about um, making Desert Surf a shorter name. So, so my first thought was maybe to surf because, you know, it's a contraction of both names. But in the end, I ended up going for something completely different, for a completely different name. Because um, a bit later in the sketching process, you will see that almost all of my sketches have like this M shape. So it almost looks like an M. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should just come up with, up with a brand name that starts with an M. So that's a bit later in the process. Okay. Um, so I'm just really going quickly through the sketches, just trying out various things and just see what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. And I really like the basic approach here. So I ended up going with something that's really, really basic, but it can be used in like all kinds of sizes, all kinds of applications. And the name that I end up using, um, I think it will be shown later in the video as well. Maybe it's better to explain it then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Take me through your thinking process here. As you're going from one form to the next, what are you thinking about? To be honest, I'm not really thinking. I'm just trying out things and mm -hmm. seeing what looks good and what doesn't look good and just trying to find a good balance between the shapes. And um, it's basically just trial and error, just trying out things and throwing away what doesn't work and keeping what does work. So I think this is the, for me always it's, it helps not to think too much and just try out things. I think I know not where you're going with this, Mark. I think I know where you're going. You're trying to get the, the waves and the dunes all in one mark, right? Yeah. Yes. Because I wanted to keep it really simple this time. Yes. Last time when we did the, the other logo, I, I maybe put a bit too much into the logo. It was a bit like all over the place. So mm -hmm. this time I wanted to keep it really clean, really simple. Okay. I think I can forward it a bit. People are saying they okay. love watching your process. So this is very satisfying to them. Uh, this is, by the way, I'm just going to pause it here for a second. Okay. Um, let me check if, where it is. I can find it anymore. I think uh, I had typed, typed above the new name. So basically my thought process to get a new name was, uh, so where can you find both dunes from the desert and big waves? And it's uh, South Africa. So I Googled um, some surfing South African slang and I found the word that was uh, Mac and it means big waves. So that was going to be my new name for the company um, because I wanted to do like basically a whole rebranding because I didn't really like the original name, Desert Surf because it's a bit too too common. And I wanted to use something really short and simple, you know, because it also really works well with the, with the shape I'm going for. Okay. Because I kept seeing the M, so I wanted to create something with the word M. So here I'm just sketching out uh, some custom topography for the brand. So Bart, you and said, this will- You said the term is Mac? Mac. Like yeah, Mac, and it means big wave in South African. It's like, it's like surfer slang. So I thought it was pretty cool because I'm creating big waves with the, um, with the symbol. So I thought it was cool to have like a, a brand name that matches the, the topography. Mm -hmm. Are you a surfer yourself? No. Okay. I have designed a couple of kite boards for a client of mine, but I've never used them. So I have three kite boards in my room just hanging on the wall, but I've never <laughs> done extreme sports myself. Yeah. We've, we've designed commercials for Audi. They did not give us any cars. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that does suck. <laughs> but probably you can buy a car from what they pay you. So. <laughs> I wish that were true. I wish uh, that were true, yes. So here I'm just cleaning up the sketch and 
um, I'm just using like really basic geometry to get the proportions right and just cleaning it up. Yeah, you know, um, I, I see a thing consistently with you now that we've spent some time mm -hmm. together is that when you design stuff, I, I like how both of you guys really try to think how does this mark live on in other ways? And being able to have common themes, elements, angles, really unify the design. And this yeah. is something I think a lot of young designers struggle with. They create a mark and then they choose a typeface and then they, they design the identity system and it feels like three separate things. In the previous example, everything was talking about using those two brackets and then integrating them somewhere else. It's a very subtle reference, but it's kind of something that you might subconsciously feel and not know. And same thing with you. Every single time we see you, you're like drawing from angles or similar themes and it makes yeah. it really cohesive. So I just want to point out for our audience. So here I'm just going into Illustrator and I'm basically repeating the step that I just did in Photoshop. Just mm -hmm. um, this time it's just going to be more clean because every um, part of the illustration snaps to like the, the grid. Yes. In Illustrator. So that's why it's easier to work in Illustrator after you've done a really clean sketch. So, Mark, people are wondering why Photoshop first, because it's easy to sketch. Is that the, the rationale? They ask this question every single time. time. So go ahead, give yeah. it one more time. Well, I guess there's a lot of people that sketch on paper first, but I'm just skipping that step of having to sketch my sketch on paper or having to scan it. So I just start in Photoshop first because it allows me to have a bit more freedom. Yeah. Just try different things. Well, and you could see he works really fast. And the other thing you may not know about Mark is he's also an illustrator, and that's how he sustains himself. He does illustration and logo and identity design. So he yeah. has the hand skills. So that's why. Let's not make it about the just, tools, though. Yeah, just it's it's more natural for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Mark? Nope. Okay, so now you're doing what you do well, which is to grid it out to make sure everything's super clean and tight. Radius yeah. of circles, it's all nice and consistent, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you using Pathfinder or Path Builder, Shape Builder? No, I'm using something else, but it's almost the same. Um, I can check what it's called after this video, but I'm not sure what it's called. Okay. I think it's almost exactly the same. It works the same, but I think you have to skip one skip step or something like that. Huh. It's not the Shift M tool? I don't know, to be honest. Okay, that's okay. So yeah, I'm just recreating the typography I just did in the sketch as well. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Sometimes things work out in a sketch, and then when you go to draw it, it doesn't have the same feeling. Do you mm -hmm. ever encounter that? Um, I do, but I tend to refine my sketches so much in Photoshop already that it doesn't really happen when I go to Illustrator. I see. Because it's already so clean in Photoshop. Yeah. So I already, I already know all the proportions. I just have to redo them in Illustrator to get them like really perfect. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, Chris, no, not really, because I'm really tight. <laughs> That's kind of what he said. He's like, you know, you amateur designer, Chris, when you do a pencil sketch, when you take it in, it's not good. And it happens to me all the time because when I'm sketching with a pencil or a pen, it, it feels good. And then you put it into the machine and it's like, oh, when you well, line things honest, up and it doesn't look good. That's the reason why I refine it so much, so much in Photoshop these days, because I used to run, it, run into those problems a lot. Like having it look really good on, on paper or in Photoshop and then yeah. going into Illustrator and it just sucks. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just refining, refining, refining until it looks perfect almost in Photoshop. And then I know that when I'm going to Illustrate it, it will look as good as well. Okay. So it's something I learned over the years, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying to me, Chris, if you, if you keep at it, you may learn a few things and you might develop a process. <laughs> no, I'm not, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, I know. Like, when you think it's done, go one extra step. That's Ooh, what I mean. There you go. There's there's your tweet for today. When you think it's done, go the extra step. You can quote Mart on that. Yeah. Go one more step, you guys. So are you rounding off the corners? Yeah. Tell me why you're rounding off the corners. Because on the uh, shape itself, on the icon on the left mm -hmm. symbol, the corners are also a bit rounded. So I just wanted to keep it co cohesive. Yes. So what's the secondary type you're adding there? Uh, I think it's called Oswald. Um, I'm just I'm adding that because also the original logo had it. So I'm just okay. I also kept in mind because uh, later I will show you some of the branding I did for this uh, project mm -hmm. that I 
I thought the original name was a bit limiting. They had like uh, Desert and Surf. But if you want to go big with a the brand, then I, I don't think it's smart to add that to the name. So I wanted to create some. Oh, it's done. I wanted to create something that has like more possibilities in the, in the, in the long run. Okay. So I saw this for my deal. She had like a Beyonce project prepared the last time she, uh, she did a logotherapy session. So I just um, did the same and I just created some branding aspects of the, the brand. So this is the steps you can see right here. So I went from Desert Surf to Deserf and then to Mac. As I explained, it's, I just thought that the name sounds better, it's shorter, it's more recognizable. I also um, created the topography a bit bigger than it used to be. It mm -hmm. used to be the same height as this, but I made it a bit bigger because I felt that the balance was a bit off. So now I think it looks more balanced. Okay. So this is just an animation of um, how I rounded the corners of the, uh, the topography. Mm -hmm. And this is also um, to show that um, like, if you add the same space between the C and the H and the K and the C, it might not look optically the same as between the M and the A. So this has a lot less space than the space between the A and the C. Right. Uh, this is just the inspiration for the, for the logo. So it's the mountain and the dunes the water and the waves and the sky in the air. And here I'm just going into the branding of the, the brand a bit. Mm -hmm. I picked some colors. So these are the two colors we started with and I'm added to, to be able to expand into different areas. So this one was used for water sports. This one was used for the sand sports, skateboarding and snowboarding. And I created some custom factor uh, textures to use for the branding. Okay. Um, these are some of the topography I use. So this is the custom topography and Oswald and Lato. And here are some of the textures in use. So I used this texture because I thought it was looked pretty cool because um, there's the impression of like the reflection on waves on the water. Yeah. But it also looks a bit like dunes and looks a bit like mountains or grass. So I think it works well with the brand. Just having that extra instead of just losing, using a plain color. I'm using two of the colors for each one. So I'm using the blue and this one, and the orange and this one, and the red and this one, and so on. Um, and some just basic stuff that almost every company needs, some business cards, some, uh, some paper, stuff like that, and some applications. So for the skateboarding part, which is the red color, this might be like a, a tag that could be put on a t-shirt. Uh, for the surfing, if you have like the dry fit t-shirts, this could be uh, the logo printed on the chest or whatever. And then this is for the the sandboarding and the snowboarding, uh, maybe a beanie or a helmet or snapback, some snowboards with the same um, texture applied to it. And then maybe a storefront where you can buy all that stuff. And that was it. Wow. Pretty clean. Woo. Nice job. Thanks. Is this up on your Behance page already? Is that what we're looking no, at? No, that's, that's, that was the thing. I'm going to publish it now so people, so people can uh, can check it out there. Nice. I so, stole this from a new. I must admit, this was her trick, but I think it's very smart. So It's a good trick. Shout out to her. Yes. Yeah. So if they want to look you up on Behance, what is your Behance? Is it um, Opmars or is it, some, is it your name? Uh, I use both. So Studio Opmars and um, Mark Beemans. So I use my Beemans for my personal illustrations and my client illustrations, and I use Studio Opmars for the branding stuff. I see. So you're going to go to the Studio Opmars and check out this work. He's going to publish it right after this yep. episode airs. Let's go to the comments and see if we've got any questions that we need to answer for people. And, oh, you know what we need to do? Before I do anything, we have to show the before and after. Can, you, can we get a side-by-side -side and check um, that out? Is this enough, this one? Where? Let's see. This, this, this before? And this is the after. This is like one step in between. Yeah, this one step in between. Okay, can we push in a little bit tighter? Is it possible to zoom in? Okay, there. That's perfect. So everybody, we're seeing the evolution of Desert Surf, and there's a middle ground here. So you could just ignore the one in the middle and say, yeah. we'll start off on the left, which you saw sky, sand dunes, and waves. And I thought it was a very clean mark to begin with. Every time people pick a logo, I'm like, I wonder what they're going to do with that. And now you see what... Mart has done here. So he's taken the the dunes and the waves and, and the sky and put it all together to make one simple and clean mark. It's very geometric and very precise. It's got some movement to it. And then he's added some custom lettering word mark on the right and optically spaced it out. So he's done now this now twice where he's taken the, the logo, the, the company, and just, eh, you know, I don't like your company name. I'll change it. But you know what? Since this is basically a spec project, 
and you want to show what you can do, I encourage people to try this. In the real world, we really can't change the client's name, so why not in fantasy land? We can do it just to show what you get, you're capable of. And I think that's really cool. So guys, let us know. On the left is the original. It's A. And then on the right is the black and white version, which is what Mart has done. That's version B. They're starting to vote now. Oh, some funny people in there. Okay. I'm going to ignore you funny people. It's either A or B. Uh, old or new. Original. <laughs> original or revised. They're giving me other letters besides A or B. So it's just one person. I'm going to ignore them. Okay. Are you All sticking right. it to A and B? I was thinking this is three options. Oh, A, B, and yeah, C? A, B, and C. No, no, just forget about the one in the middle because he didn't, He that was an exploratory phase, an in-between phase. He was yeah. just showing you, uh, like, this is nice always to see the evolution of something. So let's take a moment here and talk about this. Sometimes when you have to present a new logo to a client, they're still attached to their old stinky logo. So showing an interim step, a middle step, actually eases the transition from the old to the new. So I do recommend you guys do this. I've seen the biggest people in logo design do this, namely Michael Beirut and Paul Rand. They'll show you an evolution like how their thinking evolves so that you're like, oh, uh, the client won't say, well, did you think of that? Did you try this? Well, yes, they did. And that's that's how I came up with this. So excellent. Good job. Okay. All right. So they voted now. So what do, what do we need to do now, Mark? <laughs> I'm a little confused. Well, a lot of people are voting. They're split between A and and the original. Yeah. Or the original and the new. Which is good. That's fine. We're not here to tell people that uh, the original logo is stinky ever. We just want to see through the lens of a different designer how many different ways that they can take this on. And this is what he came up with. And I like it. Okay. Yeah, Anything there else? Some, there were some questions around the new one. So okay. They're wondering why the C looks smaller than the other letters. Ooh. Okay. Right. That's, that's a good question. Mart, how do you want to respond to that? Well, it does, but I don't think it's possible to create a C in the same style as the M and the A. I, I didn't really, it didn't really bother me because the the, the original symbol mm -hmm. or the symbol I created also has this round shape right here. So that's why I decided to use this one. But mm. I can see where they're coming from. It makes sense, but I think yeah. it still looks optically balanced. The balance that was the most important part for me. So. Yes, it's it's well spaced. I think it's an a, an issue of real estate, sc screen real estate, that it's not as horizontal as the other ones. So that mm -hmm. that's what they're reacting to. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Okay, Mark, what do we need to do? Do we need to do anything else? Um, as far as this logo, I think everybody is. Uh, yeah, like they said, there's split between it, but we're good. Okay. No questions. All right. So here's what I'm going to say to you guys because you're thinking to yourself right now after watching this episode. How, how do I get my work reviewed? Well, it's kind of a little subjective and totally random, but there's one way for sure that you won't be included in this is if you're feeling a case of FOMO, FOMO, you need to go and follow the Futures page on Facebook, The Future. I think it's The Futures here. And then there's a post here and it says, you know, submit your logo designs here. And essentially all the logo therapists, the groups of three that we have, they comb through and they pick a logo that speaks to them. Sometimes they love it. They think they can improve on it. Sometimes they hate it and they'll reach out to you. So make sure you're reachable and then send them the vector artwork and then they will take a spin at it, at kind of revising it and seeing what happens there. Okay. Should we stop sharing? Or, yeah. You can stop sharing. Okay. So a couple other things. I, I need to talk about some business. I don't know if you guys noticed, I'm wearing a brand new snapback cap. It, it literally arrived today. And I just want to say thank you to Woodbrim Hats, 24K Woodbrim Hats. You'll notice that there's this new fancy TFA monogram, the Future Academy, that's laser engraved and glued on this hat. It's looking really spiffy, you guys. So I just want to shout out. Thank you very much for sending me the hat, Woodbrim Hats, guys. Go check them out. And uh, the last little bit I have to tell you guys about is we are doing not just one live stream today. We are doing two live streams today two we're going to be switching channels we're going back to the futures main channel not the academy and we're going to be talking about design from scratch you've watched the episode a little bit of drama some interesting things going on the gang are going to get together and we're going to talk about the show after the show that's what we're going to do so i think that's it now on behalf of everybody that is tuning in myself mark and Jonah, we want to say thank you to our two most consistent, prolific logo therapists. Remember, guys, if you like their work, look them up on the web. How do they get in touch with you, Mart? What do they go? Where do they go? Tell us your your dot com address. Uh, Martbemans.com and studioopmars.com. Okay, Martbemans.com and studioopmars.com and Everton. How do they get a hold of you? Where do they go? Um, it's Everton Okay. 
try to spell that, you guys. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Just look up this episode, screen capture, and then you can look them up. They're both available for the right kinds of projects, and they they do a lot of branding at Denny Design. So look them up, show them some love, send them some money, just or just say hi or thank you and follow them on social media. That's it, you guys. Thank you very much. I'm going to remind everybody right now, Jonah. I'm going to remind everybody to not to, oh, Jonah, are you ready? To like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Turn off notifications. We'll see you guys next time. Peace, everybody. We're out of here. Where's my music? There it is. That's it for us. Take care, everybody. It's good seeing you. See you in...